Hey lifers, Dustin here, and today is Friday. So I actually, the eclipse kind of got me behind this week, and uh, in anticipation for the upcoming college football games tomorrow, holy crap, there's college football tomorrow. Today's the last day without college football for a while. Whoa. Uh, anyway, today uh, I am doing college football news. Normally I do it on Thursdays. Today it's on Fridays. Whoops. The first thing I want to talk about is how Indiana University cost an incoming freshman a year of eligibility. Brian Fitzgerald was apparently not completely told about his eligibility requirements by the compliance office at Indiana. Because of this, he did not technically qualify for the 2017-2018 year. Therefore, he cannot practice with the team. He cannot be in uh, games. He is still on scholarship, so luckily they did not take that away. Indiana appealed to the NCAA, but it was denied this past week. Failing a student athlete is absolutely unacceptable, especially in this manner. I guess you could say there's a counter argument that the kid should have done better anyway. You should always try to do your best. But if he thought he had met the eligibility requirements and it turns out he didn't, you know, he was led to believe by Indiana that he had. I don't really blame him as much as I do the university. Hopefully this is a, you know, accidental, isolated incident that will allow compliance officers all around the country to remember that they need to be on their toes with every athlete, every student, all the time. Georgia Tech fans, your struggle is finally over. Georgia Tech announced this week that they are leaving behind Russell Athletic as their apparel brand in order to form a partnership with Adidas. I have heard from Georgia Tech fans online for years and years about how much they hated their uniforms, especially in men's football and well, football and men's basketball. And finally, they will be with Adidas. This leaves Russell Athletic with no FBS teams to sponsor on the football level, with now Georgia Tech and Southern Miss being the last two. They have both decided to leave Russell Athletics behind, and I think pretty much everybody is, is better for it. Uh, Russ, they've been a part of Georgia Tech for like two decades or something. Uh, I read an article that said that Georgia Tech was to Russell Athletics what Oregon was to Nike as far as being the cool new team with the cool new uniforms. They certainly are not that cool right now, and... I believe Georgia Tech fans will probably be very excited to finally leave them, so I'm happy for you, Yellow Jackets. Unfortunately, at the time of this video, I do not have the money specifics like I did last week with Nebraska, but hopefully those are forthcoming. Auburn officials are asking their fans this season to not roll famous Tumors Oaks in downtown Auburn, as the new trees are not quite yet mature enough to handle it. Now, whether you agree with the idea that Auburn fans roll trees in those trees' dead friends and family members in order for celebrations of big Auburn wins, they have been doing so for a very long time now. It is one of the probably most known post-game traditions in all of sports. It is a really big deal to the Auburn family. They're also asking you not to roll the 10 newer oaks, the 10 smaller ones, from Tumors Corner down to Samford Hall. Those are all brand new as well since the fire in the during the offseason. So there are some designated oaks kind of around the corner that they want you to roll. If you're not familiar, Auburn rolls Tumor's Corner after every Auburn win and sometimes after like Alabama losses sometimes too. So it's a really big deal for the Auburn family. But just this one year, you can't do it just yet. Starting in 2018, you can get back to the official like tree area where you're supposed to roll. This next story that I'm talking about is probably the dumbest thing that I've talked about on this channel, and that is the Asian American announcer Robert Lee from ESPN being removed from covering the season opening game in Virginia at Charlottesville between William and Mary and the Virginia Cavaliers. So he, here's what I, I'm not really going to put too much of my own belief into this other than saying it's beyond ridiculous and stupid, but... Everybody is running around saying this is political correctness run amok and this is ESPN being cowards and all of that. ESPN, people within the organization have leaked out, and you can take this with a grain of salt if you want, that it's not actually political correctness. It's more of that there were officials at ESPN that were worried that Robert Lee would be memed, that the internet would take it up and mock him and mock the company mercilessly, and they were trying to save him and the company that embarrassment. 
Now, if you've never heard about the Streisand effect, please Google it. Uh, a short synopsis is there was a uh, helicopter on the side of a cliff in California one day taking photos and video of the houses along the coast. And one of them was Barbara Streisand's house. And she and her lawyer said, hey, do not show this photo. Well, there was like five... I haven't watched the video in a while, but there was like five searches for this uh, web page before she said that, and then there was like a million afterwards. It's now called the Streisand Effect. Basically, when there's this little bitty thing that nobody cares about, and you go, hey, don't watch this, don't look at this, it makes people want to go watch it and look at it way more. So, yes, ESPN, there's probably a couple of dudes sitting on their couch watching the game that would say, hey, isn't it funny? The Robert Lee is calling a game in Virginia. Ha ha ha. And then nobody would have thought about it. It may have gotten like a hundred likes on Twitter. And that's it. Now the entire world is mocking you, you, you dummies. Why in the world would you set yourself up for this? The number one rule of the internet is never tell the internet not to make fun of something. That's the only thing they're gonna do. Alright, enough of that nonsense. This week, NC State has announced that they have dismissed two and suspended three players, all freshmen, for violating the athletic department's policy on alcohol and marijuana. Kevince Brown and Antoine Thompson were dismissed, while Aaron Collins, Xavier Elias, and Isaiah Moore were all suspended. I will never understand these kids putting their entire futures in jeopardy just for a temporary good time, but even in college, I was always a really boring person, so maybe I'm not the best person to be casting judgment down on them. In a really cool move, Nebraska head coach Mike Riley surprised the entire Cornhuskers football team with tickets to that night's Kendrick Lamar concert in Lincoln. While, yes, I am very jealous, I would love to see Kendrick Lamar live, it did make me wonder, how is this not an NCAA violation? I mean, I haven't looked into it too much, so maybe they self-reported it. I'm not entirely certain, or maybe there's some kind of a loophole that they, they figured out. But I remember a player a couple of years ago getting him and his school in trouble and getting kicked off the team and banned by the NCAA, if I'm not mistaken, for like receiving a ride from an assistant coach and staying at his house because he was homeless. So how is getting free concert tickets not a violation of NCAA rules? I'm not trying to be snarky here. I'm genuinely wondering. If anyone has the answer to that, let me know down in the comments because... Maybe they self-reported it, and I just didn't see that. I'm just not sure. I just I just don't know how a school paying for tickets for a concert for the student-athletes isn't breaking some kind of NCAA violation. It shouldn't. It's stupid, and we all know how dumb the NCAA is, and you probably know how dumb I think the NCAA is when it comes to money. I'm just a little surprised that it happened. Penn State's conference championship in the Big Ten last year impressed Penn State officials enough to give head coach James Franklin a nice little contract extension. The brand new salary was announced this week. It is a six-year extension, raising Franklin's pay up to $5.73 million annually, putting him in the top five in the nation as far as highest paid head coaches, only behind Nick Saban, Jim Harbaugh, Jimbo Fisher, and Urban Meyer. Over the six years, the contract is worth $34.3 million. UCLA and Wisconsin announced a home-and-home home this week with UCLA hosting the Badgers in 2029 and then the Bruins traveling up to Madison in 2030. It will be their very first regular season meeting since 1982. And I just realized as I was saying this that I will be 40 and 41 years old when these two teams play. And... Ugh... In dumb sponsored bowl name news this week, the St. Petersburg Bowl got a brand new sponsor in the Bad Boys Mowers Gasparilla Bowl, which is arguably the worst sounding bowl game I've ever heard of in my entire life, including all of the bowl games before I was born. So, ever. It's the worst bowl game name I have ever heard. Also, it is a bowl game sponsored by a lawnmower company and is played on artificial turf, so good going. Also, as most of my viewership, like 98% of my viewership, obviously is in North America and primarily in the United States, I really hope most of you got at least a chance to experience the solar eclipse this past Monday. As someone who happens to live in the path of totality, it was incredible. I mean, it was damn near a religious experience. 
I totally understand why people in ancient times thought God was angry at them. Totally get it. It was a really weird, freaky time before and after the eclipse when everything was like dark and hazy. Somebody actually was lucky enough to snap this photo at Clemson University over Clemson's Memorial Stadium of totality. It is absolutely a gorgeous, gorgeous photo. Uh, for real, I really hope all of you got to experience that, at least half of it. Uh, but being in the path of totality was absolutely amazing. And to be completely honest with you, if you would have asked me when I was a little kid which would have come first, the 2017 solar eclipse or Clemson winning a national championship, I probably would have picked the eclipse. So, congrats Clemson fans. And the last thing is linked down below is a pretty interesting article about just how close Lane Kiffin came to being the offensive coordinator under Coach O at LSU, which could have sincerely derailed Alabama's national championship hopes, possibly. It'll be interesting to see after this year what may could have happened if LSU had had a better offense and better offensive coordinator. We'll just have to see how Matt Canada does, how LSU does in the SEC, and who ends up in the college football playoff at the end of the year. But that's it for me this week, y'all. As always, if there were any stories that I did not get to, please make sure to let me know right above me here. Uh, that's my Twitter. Shoot them to me during the week. I thought once upon a time that this was going to be the last edition of College Football News until the offseason again next year because any news that happens during the season, I can mostly talk about during other videos. I'm still kind of on the fence about it. I think I'm going to try it out and see if anything actually, any newsworthy things happen that I can't fit into my preview and review videos coming up during the season. I'm not sure. Let me know down below. Do you want this to continue? Do you get more alerted to ESPN during the season so you don't need videos like this? Let me know that down below as well. If you're feeling a little froggy and you want to jump, whatever that means, uh, you see something interesting during the week as far as college football news related, shoot me a tweet and let me know about it and I'll see if I can feature it on a future video if I continue doing these videos. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. You can also click the circle right there in order to subscribe or watch any of the other videos over there to the right that YouTube has suggested for you. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, until next time. Because of this, he did not technically qualify for the 2017-2018 year. Therefore, he cannot practice with the team. He cannot be in uh, games. He is still on scholarship, so luckily they did not take that away. Indiana appealed to the NCAA, but it was denied this past week. Failing a student athlete is absolutely unacceptable, especially in this manner. I guess you could say there's a counter argument that the kids should have done better anyway. You should always try to do your best. But if he thought he had met the... Hey, lifers. Dustin here. And today is Friday. So, I actually, the eclipse kind of got me behind this week. And uh, in anticipation for the upcoming college football games tomorrow. Holy crap, there's college football tomorrow. Today's the last day without college football for a while. Whoa. Uh, anyway, today... Uh, I am doing college football news. Normally I do it on Thursdays. Today it's on Fridays. Whoops. The first thing I want to talk about is how Indiana University cost an incoming freshman a year of eligibility. Brian Fitzgerald was apparently not completely told about his eligibility requirements by the compliance office at Indiana. 